Hey guys, Rick Fletcher here. Um, sorry, my little uh, remote control for my camera is not working right now, so I've got to do it manual, so i got to walk in and out of screen. I hope you don't mind. So today, I'm going to be doing uh, a little video on sharpening broadheads. So it's going to take, you know, this is not going to be a super short video, so I'll just take my time. Uh, as you guys have known over the years, I don't promote a lot of the traditional broadheads, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, I don't dislike them. I believe in them. I, I shoot single pedal broadheads myself, um, along with, you know, you know, I shoot Ramcats. I love Ramcats. Uh, there is a reason. Uh, one of the main reasons is you know, the, the information we've gathered over the way they should be sharpened has changed over the years. Old school was just take a file, leave a rough edge. Uh, you know, Dr. Ashby's saying that's not the best way. You want it really honed. Now I believe they've proven without a shadow of a doubt, you want it razor sharp. Uh, and a lot <clears throat> of people have a hard time getting a single bevel broadhead or just a broadhead in general sharp. So I thought, you know what, uh, Lansky reached out. Uh, so this is not a paid promotion, but they did provide this uh, to the bow hunting community. Everyone knows they sharpen knives well. Uh, and what I told them was, I was like, look, a lot of these broadheads, the Bishop, this is 600 grain Bishop broadhead, 200 grain Bishop broadhead, 150 grain Bishop broadhead. These things are S7 tool steel. You just can't take a file and hammer it out and have a razor sharp broadhead. The Black Swan, that's a 52, I believe, Rockwell. Uh, stainless, you know, it holds an edge good. It's hard to get an edge on it. Oh, you know what? I probably should have brought up some other. I've got some other heads I should have brought up. I may step out of the uh, camera frame here for a minute and grab that. I'll be right back. Sorry to leave you guys staring at the, the table here for a second, but I thought, you know what, we're going to take time anyway. Might as well do this right. And uh, I will bring the camera in close and zoom in. A little bit later and I've had this now for a few days this kit I've been trying it uh, different ways and I was trying to just think of a simple way that I could uh, get you guys to do something at home and produce a really sharp broadhead really quick so that's kind of what I come up with so I'm not saying Lansky's gonna approve of my technique I don't really care it's my channel um, I'm not paid, so I'll tell you if it's good or bad. But anyway, we'll kind of go from there. I brought some old school broadheads, and they're double bevel. And you know what? I put an edge on a couple of these last night, and they just got razor sharp. And then this is the black swan broadhead, which you guys know I shoot for black swan, so you can see a little bit of the difference in the profile. The black swans are way, way thicker, much heavier. So I think this current setup I'm shooting right now um, is like 297 grains up front with my black swan broadheads. The bishop broadheads, a little short, wide one. I'm just holding this up so you kind of know that traditional look of a broadhead that you're so familiar with. The 200 grain bishop broadhead single bevel and the 600 grain bishop broadhead single bevel i don't shoot the 600 personally because uh, most of the time i'm shooting a 50 pound bow and i just like a little more speed than what i get out of that uh, i'm sure it's a killing machine though <laughs> anyway all right guys we'll set these down uh, once I get, I think, the preliminary over logo head, I'll pull the camera over, zoom in, and I'll show you the way I kind of set some of the stuff up. 
Now the kit I purchased, uh, I didn't purchase, they sent me. I'm sorry, I didn't do an unboxing because I kind of want to be a little bit familiar with this kit before I did this. Um, you know, it's not a cheap kit as I bought the Deluxe Diamond Kit. So, sorry I said bought again, I did not buy it. Don't want to mislead anyone. This is where the control sticks all go. Comes with a couple extra parts. And this is the diamond kit. And it comes with several different Virgo column stones for the video. They're not stones. And I got one honing, uh, uh, stropping home also in addition. Because I want, I told them, I'm like, look, these people want these things razor sharp. And so, uh, in the video, I may not get them razor sharp, but uh, we'll get them pretty sharp. More than adequate to hunt. So, I'm going to pull the camera over and let's get ready. Hope you enjoy this, guys. Hope it's uh, helpful to you. So, you know, my dog shaking her head. Because the one thing I've just, I kind of got frustrated with traditional heads is I just couldn't get them where I wanted sharp wise. And I'm like, you know what? It just isn't fair to the animal. And that's why you've seen me promote so many, uh, so many times like the Ram Cat, you just buy it out of the package, replaceable blades. But then I see people not sharpening the blades, just continue using the same broadhead and they're not razor sharp. And so it really brought me to make this video regardless of what head you're using, it's gotta be sharp. So, I, re I regress, let's get back to the broadhead. So, I wanna throw on the traditional head that everyone knows, the shape and style. We'll put it on and let's look at the simplicity of this. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I've had too much coffee this morning. I got the shakes. And so with this setup, you have the extra coarse, the coarse, the medium, the fine, and this is actually a leather strop. So you notice I don't have the bar, the keeper bar on there. I'm gonna use it uh, there again, Lance, you may not approve. It's just the way I feel like I can control it enough to do that. So for these broadheads, um, I'm not gonna use the extra coarse. I just don't feel like it needs it. Uh, they're not that rough. Now, if I had shot this and it had hit a bone or passed through the deer, entered in, hit a rock, to, took a chip out, definitely I would. Um, on a blade like this, uh, at this condition, I'm going to say probably a medium. We'll just go ahead and start with a medium stone. And then we'll go fine and then leather strop it. So, in doing this, you have these different angles. Yes, I got this straight, did I? I'm gonna have to loosen that up. Sorry, guys. I've had a lot of coffee this morning. I like it too. <laughs> this is your different angles uh, that you can sharpen at. So let's go ahead and take the medium stone. No, it's not a stone, but it's the diamond Virgo column stones for the video. Uh, because here's another thing, unless you're using the Bishop broadheads, you probably don't have to get the diamond. I would use the Arkansas stones and I may actually contact Lansky and go ahead and get an Arkansas stone finishing stone for these broadheads because even the fine diamond doesn't take it to the point of like the Arkansas stone that I really love the feel of that Arkansas stone when I finish up. So, all right guys. So what you need to do is find the angle of your broadhead. So on this one here, the way it's set up is I'm using a 25 degree angle. And that's another point. Um, like if you find a broadhead, if it doesn't match your broadhead angle perfectly, um, and I have run into that, I take the coarse stone, I set it where I want it, and I hammer out a basic, I hammer it out. Then I go in and I work my way down with the different grit stones until I get where I want to be. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go rough just to show you guys. 
Okay, so we're gonna go not with the extra coarse, but with a coarse stone. We're gonna put it in and I'm just gonna show you what I do just to create an angle. So you wanna count your strokes. So let's say 20 strokes there. We're gonna flip it. And we're gonna do 20 strokes here. Now, I know I didn't follow any kind of a perfect routine or anything. Um, now, what I would do is I would break that down into sections when I'm uh, trying to create this first angle. I already have it. This is more of a basic video, okay? So now let's say I did 20 with a rough. I'm gonna do, start out with at least 30, the medium, because it had, now has scratches. Let's put in this metal by those diamonds. So let's do, let's start out with 30. So that's 30, okay? Now we're gonna flip it. Go back to this coarse stone on the other side. We'll do 20. And then I'm gonna try to go ahead and sharpen toward the tip. Um, I've tried it both ways. It really doesn't seem to matter a whole lot, but I know that that's what a lot of people do. We're going to do it. So we're going to do 30. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but the sound of it changes and you can feel the resistance change. You kind of know um, when it's time to move on, you, you can just feel it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit five more times on each side with this medium. You notice I covered a larger area. I'll do that again. So now we have 10, so I'll go ahead and do 10 over here. All right, now let's move to the fine. That's 40. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm trying to, it's a little bit awkward for me to do, trying to show it to you on the camera. So anyway, I hope you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing. So now I can feel a little, I rolled it over a little bit, which is perfect, which means I've got the angle, I've maintained it, and I've pushed over a little edge. So now we're gonna flip it. We're gonna take that same fine stone. One, two, roll it over. One, two, now, Oh yeah, it shifts. Okay, so you see how easy that was? And I took the long way around just because I'm doing a video and I want you guys to see the steps that I take. Now, what you're supposed to do is put this on uh, the control rod and do it the same. I've discovered that for me, with a broadhead, I can control the angle so easily by using the ferrule that I can control it. So. I 
minus 40. We're just going to finish it off with a couple. Oh, Can you hear that? I'm just popping them off. So <clears throat> that's how easy it is. And you can take it further. Uh, on a double bevel broadhead like this, uh, you can even, like many times, I'll take it to, I'll roll my window down on my vehicle and I'll just smooth it uh, on the edge of my, the top of my window, the driver's side window. But this is razor sharp right there. So we'll take this one off. That's a double bevel. And I'll show you on a single bevel. You're gonna be surprised what I do on a single bevel broadhead. It's pretty funny. So let's put it in. But I've been trying different ways to try to create. There's a lot of ways to do this. But what I wanted to do there again, the only reason for this is I know there's a real push for the single bevel broadhead, but I don't feel like people should shoot it if they can't get their broadhead sharp. So that's why I'm making this video. Um, so what we're gonna do is, let's. this is a single bevel broadhead. It's flat on this side. Here's your bevel here. So. Again, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the course, not the extra course. And we're gonna go to the bevel side. Check our angle. That looks like that will work. And let's hammer out a few. more than enough. That's about 30 strokes on there. Then we're gonna go to a medium without uh, flipping it over. six times. I, I know that's more, but I, I went till I had the feel, till I felt it. Uh, you'll know what I mean whenever you start using these diamonds. It's not like a regular uh, stone that you would use. These actually cut. You can feel it cutting. When it smooths out, you know that you've taken out the, the bigger cuts from the one that preceded it. Now we're going to go to the fine. And then sometimes, I know they all, you always go the same direction, whatever. Sometimes I go cross hitch uh, just to take out any scratches that may, uh, may be deeper. But we'll, we'll go ahead and go do this. strokes with the fine. Now the fine, you can't even see anything on my hand. There's no medical part particles falling off or anything. So it is, it's pretty fine. All right. And as you can imagine, we're going to have, uh, on a single bevel doing it like this, you're going to have a little bit of a rough side on the back. So let's flip it over and we're going to go straight. Um, you know what? If yours hasn't you may have to go to the medium. Let's just go to the medium for uh, video's sake. And with medium pressure, light to medium pressure, we're gonna do five strokes, okay? That's on the flat side. And that, there's a reason for this. If you looked under a microscope, this metal is rolled over. So we did five strokes. Now that we're gonna come into the fine, We do 10 strokes. Now we're gonna flip it over. Uh, 
and do 10. Really light pressure, we did two. Let's check it. It's popping, but not popping like I want. So let's see where we're lacking. Let's see if this is the, yeah, that was it. Okay, so I have just a little light on the flat side. Isn't that cool? So just by going in and hitting that flat side and putting a micro edge, so actually you're creating a micro double edge, but you pretty much have to, um, to get these babies razor sharp like that where it just pops the hairs off. So you go in and you take your single bevel and you work it down to the angle you want. Just simplifying it, flip it over, same thing, you take that rolled edge off and maybe I had not taken enough of the rolled edge, maybe microscopically it was still rounded over right there. Take it, take that uh, fine stone, you cut that off and bam, just like that, you've got a razor sharp broadhead that pops the hairs off your arm. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna show you now with the Bishop broadhead, which is kind of a different animal, uh, you can't use your typical process on sharpening that because that thing has such a steep angle. It has an incredibly steep angle. So I'll show you what I mean. If you look at this, look at this angle. I'll do this so you can see. Even if I put it on the steepest angle available, you're nowhere close to being able to sharpen this broadhead. Hopefully that's shown on the camera, guys. If it isn't, I really apologize. I'm trying to do this video to be informative because I feel like it's very important you guys are getting these single bevel broadheads sharp, especially the Bishop. I love the Bishop broadhead. They're indestructible, but they do have a downfall. You can't sharpen them unless you know what you're doing. So I really want this to be educational. Um, if you're going to spend the kind of money these broadheads cost, good grief, guys, sharpen them. The most important thing you can do right now is buy a good sharpening kit. I don't care if it's really old broadheads that you've got. This thing here will just scare the hairs off your arm. Super easy. So this is that Bishop. Well, let me show you what I do. I looked at different ways of doing this just to see what was the easiest, most productive way that the average Joe, just take this out of the box and get it razor sharp. Uh, this is kind of what I come up with. So let's say you've shot this, um, been practicing with it, whatever, got it in the dirt, and it's like this one and it's dull. So what I'm gonna uh, suggest you do is get either a the course or extra course. I'm gonna say the course and you can find that angle. It's really easy because the angle is so steep on these broadheads. And once you find it, hopefully I'm hitting it. Me trying to do it out here for the camera is a little bit awkward. So then we're gonna to go to the medium stone Okay, so there again, you can just look at it and see where it's at, or you can actually feel it. So we're gonna angle it a little bit. That's 40 strokes with the uh, medium, and believe me, with this S7 tool still, it's hard stuff, you need it. And then we'll go to the fine, oh, you know what I did, I grabbed those backwards, that was actually the fine there, so hopefully I cut enough steel, um, and I'll show you what I do next. So let's, yeah, I do have a little lip over, so I think we were successful, let's try it. I flip it over to the flat side, you can, can you hear that? It does have a little lip on it, which means we were successful in rolling that edge over. So then I'm going to take this medium stone. Okay. 
try seven times. I'm gonna take the fine stone, cut off any burrs that may be left. Now, this sounds kind of crazy, but what I'm gonna have you do at this point is test it. Yeah, it's popping here, but could be better, okay? So we're gonna go back over to this side again. Hope, I'm hoping this is showing up, guys, I'm trying. Do you see how I use the rod? Stabilizes, it holds my angle, it really works good. getting super smooth, so I'm pretty sure we're there. And then we're gonna just go, I'm gonna actually go back, I'm gonna try that. Let's see, three strokes. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's what you gotta do, guys, for the Bishop Broadhead, and that worked great. Sorry, it's got hairs on it. That's all there is to it, you can sharpen single bevel or double bevel bevel broadheads and that's what this Lansky diamond oh uh if you're gonna sharpen the bishop broadheads 100 percent you have to get a diamond sharpening kit you cannot do it with stones it'll it'll wear you out um i've done it i've tried it and it takes so long it isn't worth it go ahead and get a diamond uh, honer and work it down you see how easy that was I drug it out for the video just to try to show you all the different stuff there is involved in doing this, but it's so simple. It really is simple. And so just to recap what I do on any of these, any of these single bevels is I'm going to just imagine it's a regular single bevel, but the angle will work is you work your angle. Okay. Uh, I'm working toward the tip. You don't, cut on the way back, you just cut on the push. So cut, 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 cut. Okay, we're gonna roll it over. We're gonna maintain the same angle. So you wanna keep that same position, whatever that is. And then we're gonna go in toward the tip again, only cutting on the push. Just a few times, make sure that we cut all of that rolled over steel off and it exposes that razor sharp edge. You can see how it just grabs my finger. Hopefully this will show. Let me show you this. It's stupid sharp. <laughs> I'm going to push it, but it's cutting in just to even set it on my thumb. But uh, it just, it just wants to cut now. Now this is a very doable blade. It's razor sharp. It's tough as a nail. I'd be proud to hunt with that. But I can tell you what, if it isn't razor sharp, don't shoot it, guys. Take the time and get them ready. All right, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Please be kind on uh, your comments. It's a family channel. And I did this for you guys and myself because I was getting a little frustrated on uh, trying to get these sharpened with that traditional stones. I just was having trouble. But now, as you can see, I've sharpened several broadheads. And especially if you guys, because this kit, was, let's face it, it was designed for knives. Um, and I've tried to incorporate it into broadheads. It manages your angle exactly. So I think that's the big thing with these single bevel broadheads. People were having a hard time getting that same angle every time on the stroke which led me to come up with, and you know, I'm used to, you would just come in flat and knock the burr off. Just real careful, flat. And I come in and I discovered that if you, oh, this is a raw broadhead that's never been sharpened from Black Swan, that's pretty cool. But um, anyway, here's one I, I have sharpened. And then you come in and you maintain that exact angle and you you go in and you cut that exact angle. It's just a microscopic right out on the edge. So it will not have any effect on the single bevel performance. 
but right out here microscopically, it is just super razor sharp, just like a knife blade. I mean, but you can just, which I guess you guys can hear that. My arm was sore last night. I had, I was sharpening a bunch of knives and broadheads, getting everything ready. And I've got bald spots all over my arm. But anyway, guys, old school, Bishop, 600 grain, black swan, stainless steel. I don't guess it matters. The diamond will cut it. Now, I do strongly recommend leather stropping any broadhead. There is a huge difference between a stropped broadhead or knife and one that isn't. Um, I find out also that after you've stropped one, it stays sharp better. Uh, it doesn't have all those little micro, uh, irregularly cut pieces of metal that uh, fill up with medium uh, dirt, fibers from the hide, meat bone. You, the minute you think it doesn't, you know, you need to take uh, a piece of deer hide and look at the back of it and it is very fibrous. And when you push it through, if, you've ever, if you've ever cut mediums, uh, like a saw blade on a deer, you'll see how the teeth want to load up. It's even worse microscopically. So just instantly, it fills up all the little micro gaps and that thing is no longer as sharp as you think it is. But when you hone it, you get rid of a lot of those imperfections and it's just scalpel sharp like this one it's hard to load up with fibrous materials because there's just nowhere for it to hang up. And I think that's the really important part of a, a leather strop. All right, guys, we'll end the video with that. I hope it was um, somewhat enlightening. I'll try to get in the frame here. So I know this isn't like a usual video, but it's Sunday morning before church and I'm like, man, I need to get this out and I've been so busy, but I just, I hope it's helpful to you guys. Thank you, Lansky. It's a great product. Uh, I do recommend it. So you guys, I do not recommend everything I'm sent. That is a good product. Strongly recommend it. If you're with the Bishop Broadhead, 100% get the diamond. Um, if you're sharpening old school broadheads, regular steel knives, I don't think it matters. Uh, you know, you know the broadheads you're shooting and the steel they're made from. All right, guys, remember, uh, play hard, pray hard, work hard, pay the bills, and uh, support the work. I will catch you in the woods.